What's going on everybody, Jade up here. So today's video is going to be a beginner's guide for a lot of people. Um, if you're just not coming to the game or, or whatnot, uh, this is going to be a quick little um, what to look for when you first start the game. Now what you're going to do, uh, obviously, uh, create a character. Obviously you're going to have your race, male, female, your alliances, three different ones. So you're going to have DC, AD, EP. And if you didn't and choose the um, Adventurer's Pack, which lets you choose any race, any alliance, you'll be stuck with the DC races. So you'll have Breton, Orc, and Redguard. And AD, you'll have High Elf, Wood Elf, Khajiit. And if you have EP, it'll have Argonian, Dark Elf, and Nord. So what I'm going to choose is an Argonian from DC. I'm going to make him a male. And... Yeah, so this guy's going to be for basically Battlegrounds and PvP in general. But I'm going to make it, and then you have your classes. So you have Dragon Knight, which is more of like a tanky build. Uh, well, Dragon Knights are more, you can have like a stand more Magicka version of them. Um, but mainly used for tanks. Uh, Sorks, so you can have a Stamp Sork or a Magicka Sork. And most people choose Magicka Sorks. You can have Nightblades, Magicka, or Stam, and these are probably the hardest hitting this patch, in which it's, um, it's May 10th, 2018, so these will, um, these are the hardest hitting this patch, Stam and Magicka. Then you got Templars, which are mainly for heals, a lot of people use these for healers, uh, for both, uh, PvP and PvE. And then you get your Wardens, which is an extremely powerful class in PvP. Um, not so much in PvE. But we're going to choose Templar. And then here you can go through here and you can kind of like, um, we'll take no gear off so you can kind of see the shape of his body. So you can choose, oops, there you go. Choose exactly how you want them. To, within an extent, you know, with, choose how high you, you know, how tall you want them, skin color, uh, body markings, which you can choose these differently, obviously. You got torso, you can make it either really big, small, whatever. So I'm not going to go, go too much into that, but let you mess with that. And then faces, obviously, you can go up to heroic. Basically like an angry looking, weird looking guy, soft, whatever. You can change the age of him. Different markings on his head. But uh, different eye color, stuff like that. So now that, let's just say that now that you picked your character, we're just going to randomize him a few times. And uh, we're just going to choose this one. Looks good kind of messed up. Anyways, um, we're going to name them Beer and Pizza. So we're going to create them. Now you do have the option um, if you've already started the game or if you've already played it once, you already have a character that already played the intro, you can either skip it, you can play it. Um, I always skip it. There's really no need to go through and play it again once you've already done it. So, uh, I will skip this. So, I am playing on the PC, but I am using an Xbox controller. If you are using an Xbox controller, all you have to do is plug in the core that you get from the Xbox controller uh, with the uh, actual game, or buy it from Amazon, whatever. Plug it into your PC, hook it up to your controller, and then all you're going to do is go to Settings, Gameplay, turn Gamepad Mode on. Now the first thing you do, as you can see, I'm literally just started this guy. We're going to go here, we're going to claim these rewards right quick. And since we're going to go Magicka, that's where I'm going to put it. So usually what I like to do is I do like to go in through there and pick up everything and all everything I can. Um, also what I do like to do is go through options. I do like to kind of mess with my options a little bit, my gameplay, gameplay mat on. I don't really mess with too much of this as I already had it pre-made, but you can change 
the color of friendly. Um, this would be like your friendly stuff, like heals and stuff in PvP. I don't ever see it in PvE, but in PvP you'll see it some. And then enemy AoEs, I like this color. I did have it pink, orange, uh, or red, but with fire damage happening a lot, this is probably like the clearest I've seen in AoE. Uh, I do turn preventing attacking innocents on. That way you do not uh, attack an innocent for some reason. Ground casting abilities. I always have it on because what that basically means is if you have an AoE ability. Alright, so as soon as I hit X, the ability is going off, right? Well, if you turn... Oh my goodness. So if you turn this... Um quick cast ground abilities on as soon as you hit that uh, that button it, whether it's like an AOE ability it's gonna go off now if you have it off uh, basically what that means is you'll have to hit the button twice so keep that in mind um, I don't really mess with too much of this you can turn on auto on or off it doesn't matter basically um, what that means is when you kill something you go to loot it you have the option to either pick it up um, immediately or actually look go through it and kind of see which one you want um, loot history on and off totally preference and tutorials if you're new to the game you can keep it on for a little bit kind of get used to what you need to do and stuff like that it does does help you out a little bit um, but if you've played the game before or something like that you can definitely turn that off um, on camera views I do like to um, take the third person and first person um, field of view I like to take those all the way out um, I like to display user ID. Um, I always just have this always show. And then as far as that goes, that's it. Nameplates, you can turn those on. I turn show title off, show guild off. And then, you know, this will show up for different uh, NPCs, people in your group, and other players. Which is just basically the other, their name. And it's just easily able to identify, as you can see, I can easily identify who this guy is. Now, this is health bars. Um, you can change it to where they're, they're always on or when they only take damage or anything like that. I usually have it off since I'm not, I don't, I don't PvP, so I, I don't really care to uh, have it on. But I know a lot of my buddies at PvP, they have it on, and it uh, kind of helps them out a little bit. And then you can turn on um, alliance indicators, which basically what that means is, um, let's see, let's see if it'll work in here. Oh, it doesn't. Well, anyways, in your PvP, you'll have a little icon above your name. Um, so it'll be right above his name. It'll be like either, since he's EP, as you can tell right where his uh, name is where it says like 71 and Kazuya to the right it's got like a red diamond looking thing well above his head it'll have like the EP symbol and if you're blue you'll have the uh, Daggerfall icon if you're 80 you'll have the 80 icon um, and that's pretty much it there uh, as far as social you can um, So this has to do with the minimum transparency on the chat if you have it all the way to the left It's obviously going to be seen through a lot better if you have it all the way to the right You won't be able to see through it that much text size make it big or make it small Profanity filter I always have off uh, And these are just notification for leaderboards. So if you have them off you won't get notified that somebody completed Maelstrom or Trial or something like that. So once you have your options set up and you go through here and you put at least one ability from your class ability on your bar right here, just how I did. So I quickly went into here, I unlocked it and put it on my bar. Now once you do all that, you're going to go into your inventory, go to supplies, open up this bad boy hit X take everything this is your food 
and you get it for free you can either hit X and assign it to where whichever quick slot you want or you can hit uh, A and just use it right off the bat go to your weapons and you can choose if you want to do some uh, bow if you want to start out killing stuff with a bow or two-hander starting out and then you can obviously come here and equip the better equipment now, as you can see to the right, it's going to show you what's better. So if I have the slave pants on and I go down, obviously green arrow is going up, meaning it's good. And then I click that, red arrow is going down, means it's not as good. Now you can toggle the view, obviously with X. Which basically lets you show, you know, slave pants on the left side and then, you know, on the right side. And if you look at the very top on the right it'll say equipped or unequipped or it won't even say unequipped it'll just say equipped excuse me and then you'll start out with a little necklace now let's say you just started and you did all that stuff and you are good to go what you're gonna do is you're gonna run this way you can go ahead and pick this up you're going to go to this way shrine. Now when you first start out, let me use my mouse or right click to be easier. So when you first start out, all these, all these way shrines are, are going to be up right off the bat. So that means you can travel to, if you, if you have, if you bought the same thing that I bought. I bought Adventurous Pack, I bought, and I bought the Somerset expansion. I, and I just came to PC a few, a few weeks ago. So what I did is I bought Somerset. Somerset gave me the base game for free. It gave me Morrowind for free. And then I went ahead and bought the Adventures Pack and Imperial Edition. So basically Imperial Edition is it's just a new it's just a class. That's all it is. And as soon as you make an Imperial, you'll be able to um learn their motif basically so you don't ever have to buy an a, a motif a imperial motif um and i bought the adventures pack as well adventures pack is really cool it's uh, any race any alliance so it let it let me be able to be a dc argonian um so again i'll show you here so if you buy somerset right off the bat you're gonna get all this stuff for free basically so if you buy the standard edition which will be on the left side you'll get all this stuff with the Somerset but as soon as you get to the Blood Shadow Steed this is the collector's edition you just go all the way down this is all the stuff that you'll get when it goes live um, on June 5th so Alright, so you did all that and we're good to go. What are you going to do is you're going to go to this way shrine. You're going to zoom out. And all these way shrines that are here, you can travel to. Okay? Um, obviously, Bleak Rock, Stone Falls. Uh, what do we got? Canaris Roos. I totally butchered that, but it's fine. Aradon, Gold Coast, Hughes Bean, Charles McCall, Glenumbra, and Rothgar. So these are all your starting areas. Okay? Now this is your starting area for EP, this is your starting area for AD, and this is your starting area for DC. Now I can go to AD or EP and start there if I wanted to, or I can start in the DC area, or I can start in, in the um, two DLCs, which these are DLCs right here. So if you have um, ESL Plus you can definitely go to those. Um, I'm DC, so I'm going to go to Glenumbra. Alright, we just arrived in Glenumbra. This hooded figure wants to talk to us because we have the DLC. She wants us to do some quests. Now, what you're going to do, obviously this is the Daggerfall Way Shrine in Glenumbra. Here, what you want to do, is you're going to go to the bar. Alright? And then you're going to go to Fighters Guild and Mage Guild. So you don't have to go to those three in this order you could just you could just make sure you go to all three of those and we're good to go and what you're going to be looking for in the bar is there's going to be a quest marker with, with like four to five people all right and here it is right here here's the people you'll have um 
three or four people sitting down and then one person at the head of the table. Basically what you want to do is you want to talk to them. Um, and I'll be talking about some Undaunted stuff and then you'll pick that up. Basically you can just mash the shit out of A and you'll be good to go. And then you will unlock the Undaunted skill line. Now the Undaunted skill line is I'll go over it a little bit. Uh, for tanking you'll be using probably one or two of these skills. You'll probably use Blood Altar here and there, Inner Fire, which is a ranged taunt. And um, you might use some other, the, uh, some, uh, some other skills in here. But mainly what you're wanting to get it for is for these two passive abilities for sure. As far as your DPS goes, DPS or healer. What they do is anytime you activate a synergy, um, you're going to get a little bit of health, stamina, and magic about it. Now the Undaunted Metal, what this one does is basically if you wear one, you know, one heavy, one light, and one medium, you're going to get a bonus of, you know, a certain percent. So right now, what do I, I think I only have one light on, right? Yeah, so I only have one light on, so that, that, show, that would show as only one percent. Now if I had one heavy piece, one medium piece, and one light piece, that would go to three percent. And I would have a 3% bonus increase of max health, stamina, and magicka. Now once you get it higher, obviously the percent will go a little bit higher for both of these. So after you pick up the Undaunted skill line, you're going to go right back out. To, right back out and then you're going to go straight to the uh, Fighter's Guild and Mage's Guild. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to go to the Fighter's Guild first. So as you can see, this is the Fighter's Guild. It's going to have your two red swords um, poking down. Go in here. What you're going to do, you'll see somebody with a quest marker. There he is. He or she. And you're going to talk to him. And basically, you can read all this or you can bash the shit out of A. Or your E key or whatever key. Complete the quest. You're going to get like some shit XP and some shit gold, but you're also, what you're going to get is you're going to get the skill line. So, these are really good. Um, as the stamina DPS, you'll definitely have Dawnbreak on your front bar. To, um, for later on, another morph that you'll get from it. Um, and for your tanking abilities, you will probably use Circle Protection on certain bosses. And trials and stuff like that if you're, if you're looking in for a PvE standpoint. PvP, you'll definitely probably be using Dawnbreaker if you're a Stam. Um, Trap Beast, PvE-wise. And these do take a little bit to level up. So keep that in mind when leveling this stuff. Um, if you're fit level 15 and higher, which we'll get into a little bit a little bit later, you will be able to have two different weapon class or two different weapon uh, two different weapons you can equip, such as a two-hander and a bow. A two-hander and a sword and board or whatever. I obviously can't because I am only level three. But basically, if you go to level anything up and you want something so so bad, definitely put it put the uh, same ability on both bars. That way, it levels up no matter which bar you're on. But basically, um, if you're a DPS. Whether you're magical or stam, you're definitely going to want this passive here, which anytime you kill Daedra, Undead, or Werewolves, you're going to generate three ultimate. Also, you're going to get Skill Tracker, which is basically going to do additional damage to Undead, Daedra, and Werewolves. Now, um, some magic classes do use Trap Beast, which basically is going to give you a little bit of a uh, bonus in DPS, which it, um, it's called Minor Force, increases your critical damage. A lot of people will be using this. Um, some some Magicka users do use this, and uh, almost every single stam in the game that is PvE oriented will use Trap Beast. So, just keep that in mind when you're going to level this stuff. Alright, so now we're going to Mage's Guild, which is basically so convenient, it's right next door. Mage's Guild looks like a little eyeball with some blue banners. You're going to go in here, 
look for the quest lady or man, which would be right here. Yes, I'd like to know more about the mages guild. No, I don't really care. Complete quest. Bam. Now, what you're going to get, XP, some gold, and 5 plus the mage guild. Now, you can go down here and you can look and... These are all the abilities and passives you're going to get for Mage Guild. Now, how do you get Mage Guild? It's pretty simple. All you're going to do is you're going to go around and you're going to see books like this. But there will be books that are glowing like a bluish color. Let me see if I can find one if there's one in here. So the way to level up Mage Guild is you have to get uh, a blue. You're going to have to get these blue books. So we're going to trespass just so I can show you this blue book. So here's what the books look like. These will level up your mages guild. They'll be like a little bluish purplish looking color. All you do is you click on them. You can read them if you want and then you can hit B and then there you go. Bottom right hand corner it leveled up my mages guild a little bit. Now when you pickpocket or lockpick a house, you're obviously going to open up a new skill line called Ledgerman, which is basically letting you open up some stuff a lot quicker. You'll be able to sell some stuff to the fence, and you'll be able to make pretty decent gold that way. Now the more you level it up, um, the more items you're able to uh, sell to the, uh, to the fence. Now the next thing you want to do, uh, once you got the Fighters Guild, Mage Guild, and Undaunted, is you're going to go to the Stable Master, which is wherever the horse is at. You're going to talk to him, him or her. You're going to go in here, and you're going to go to Riding Trainer. And once you have enough money, you're going to go and click Speed, Stamina, or um, basically your Bank Space. I always start with speed first because I would always like to go faster than you know what I mean first and then later on I would always do backspace and the last I would do stamina or you can do back and forth or one per each it doesn't matter now basically what you do is you're gonna do these once a day every time you log on um, you can even set a timer on your phone for it or whatnot and uh, you know, just make sure you log on every day and uh, pump some points in here. And you'll thank me in the long run. Now, once you've done all that, what is there to do next? Well, if you're on PC, I suggest making sure you get some a little bit of add-ons, at least. And here's the ones that I do suggest. I suggest you get lore book, lore books, and I suggest you get sky shards. And if anything, um, Votan's mini map, which I'll I'll open that one in. Basically, what you can you can see it. It's a mini map that pretty much tracks your, yourself running around in a circle, as I am right now. Um, but it lets you see the mini map in a um, decent decent view. Let me close this in a decent view, so you can easily. Um, go wherever you need to go. Now, here's what the, the lore books do. They're, what they do is they show you where all the lore books are that can help level up your mages guild. Okay, and as you can see, like, um, let's go to this one here. As you can see, it says the orcs, right? It's got the orcs. It's got about three of them. That means... It doesn't mean that you get you can collect all three. All that means is that you can pick one of these books up, wherever it may be. It may be in one of these three spots. You go and pick it up, and then those three will disappear. So as you can see, this one's like the Nameless Daughters, and this one's this one's the Orcs too. So it's four. Um, some of them have four. Some of them have. Look, there's the Orcs again. Is that the same one? Really? Varieties of Faith, the Orcs? Yeah, so that's crazy. So, I did know, that, I didn't know they had more than five, or they could have more than five, but I did know that they had up to four, but apparently there's up to like five of the same book that you can pick up in different areas, 
So that's actually kind of new to me. Glad I figured that out. Well, anyways, uh, you basically come over here, you pick this book up, and then where all the orcs, the, the varieties of faith, the orcs, they will all disappear, and then you can proceed to pick up the other books. These are your sky shards, which um, you'll have you'll have a nu numerous ones on each uh, each area. There'll be some in dungeons, like here's a dungeon here, which looks like a little torch. So you'll go through the dungeon and you'll fight your way through it, and you know you can defeat the boss or whatever, or just go and pick up the sky shard and then teleport out. These little icons are Munda stones. Now basically what these do is they either help your defense or help your help your defense or offense. Um, there's some that increase your weapon damage and spell damage and then there's some that, uh, that uh, help raise your health, your stam, your magicka, your recovery for those, um, your defense. So those are really cool. Keep an eye out for those and choose whichever one you wish wisely. You can you can pick one up and then as soon as you go to another Munda Stone. So let's say there there is a Munda Stone called the Lover. So let's say I go and pick up the Lady and then I go pick up the Lover. I will lose the Lady and then gain the Lover. So just keep that in mind. You're only allowed one Munda Stone. Um, per character. Now as you can see on the bottom left hand side or excuse me the bottom left hand corner of the uh, screen it has like a two with a coin. Basically what happened is when I lock picked into that house I got seen and that means that now I'm wanted by the guards and I have to pay two gold to uh either not be caught by the guard so what's going to happen is i'll just i'll actually just show you so here's the guard here wait where is he at there he is so what he's going to do is going to stop me and he's going to say hey pay the gold and get the hell out of here you're good to go um you know whatever and then you can flee i'm going to pay it right now you can flee basically with that when you flee you're gonna have to run or run away and then every guard that you're gonna come in contact with is gonna attack you and try and kill you now if you're just starting out and you follow the prevent attack um, innocence and stuff like that you won't uh, you shouldn't rack up any um, any money like that that you, or any, any bounty excuse me so you should be good there all right, so let's say that I started a quest line. So I have the main quest line, which is um, Soul Shriven and Cold Harbor. And basically, this is your very, very beginning quest that you're going to do. And these are the quest markers um, right here that look like a, um, I don't know, whatever kind of icon that is. Anyways, you're going to look at it. And if it's highlighted white like this, that means that is the quest you are tracking up in the top right hand corner of your of your screen. Talk to the hooded figure. Okay. Now if let's say I click this one and go to it, now I go to it, which is this is the talk to the hooded figure, it's blacked out. That means that it is an active quest, but I am not currently tracked on it right now, meaning it's not the quest that I'm pursuing. If you want to pursue it, all you need to do is just click A when you're on the map hovering over it, and then you will quickly swap to it. These little icons here are the Outlaws um, Refugee, more more like a um, thieving place where you can go and uh, turn in your uh, fences and stuff like that. So basically anything you stole without getting caught... Well, let me just say this. If you steal anything and you get caught, so, well, that, you, you can't steal that. But anyways, if you steal anything and you don't get caught, you can come all the way over here. All right, so now that we're in the refugees area, what you're going to do is you're going to come all the way down here. 
Uh, so basically once you steal something and you don't get caught by the guards, you can come all the way down here, which is a pretty unique area. And uh, basically you can hit select or your map and you can see where your fence is, the merchant. And basically all you do is you talk to them and you can even sell stuff or you can launder stuff. And then, oh, isn't there a banker here? There's a, there, and here's the money launderer, which is basically your banker. We're going to go ahead and deposit the stuff in here. Uh, but that is your banker right here. You can deposit stuff in there. And that is your, uh, that is your thieves guild, or through your thieves or your ledgerman this will help you level up your ledgerman let's go to it right quick so anything you sell you can go to the fence and and sell whatever you acquired there now obviously um, the higher you get I say I believe I'm not a hundred percent sure but I believe it goes all the way up to like 20 or so and um, Really, what you're looking for is if if you're looking to make a character strictly for lock picking, or if you just want to make a character to sit there and, and steal stuff from people, or you know increase your um, lock picking uh, abilities, uh, then you'll level these up, and and you know it'll it'll increase your chances of either lock picking and or pickpocketing. Now this one is really cool, increase the number of fence interactions you could use each day, which is nice because it basically means like you can sell more shit a day. More shit every day. Increase the cost of sneak, whatever, and then reduce your bounding your bounties. So basically when it was like two gold, I would probably have like one gold if I had some stuff in there. Alright, so now that we're in here, we might as well go over a little bit of the icons, just kind of give you guys an idea of what is what so let's just start over here so obviously these are your docks basically these guys can travel you to certain areas around the map which is pretty nice and you can you you should be able to use these pretty much as soon as you spawn in uh, again this is your um, your uh, legend stuff you go in here your, where your fences and stuff like that where, we, where we're at now over here is where all your guild traders are at so you can go here and people sell stuff as on guild traders and whatnot um, and you can purchase sell whatever from there now keep in mind that if you want to sell anything from a guild trader you have to join um, a trading guild and a lot of times you won't have to really look too hard for them They'll post up in area chat all the time in your zone chat, which I'll show you right now. Um, they'll pop up in here all the time saying, hey, we're um, a trading guild is looking for new members, blah, 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 blah. They say that shit all the time in zone chat. You'll either see it or get annoyed by it or whatever. But that stuff will pop up all the time. All right, so this is your trading guilds now. This wagon um, basically only goes to Rothgar. You'll go to Rothgar, which is a DLC, and you, they got some quests, some sky shards, low books, and stuff like that over there. Obviously, these are your way shrines. This is your bar, your fighters guild, your mages guild, and uh, this is basically like an icon. <coughs> <coughs> Now, if it's blacked out, it obviously means that you haven't completed um, the quest line here. And if it's white out, then you have, and good job for you. Now, here's the Stable Master. Again, you come here, do this daily, please do this daily, and you will thank me. Um, and here is your crafting stations. So, we'll start out here. This is where Alchemy Wood Curting um, your general goods alchemist and outfitting station which is like your dive station if you want to color your different uh, color your different outfits or whatnot you can do that here obviously the icons are on the right side of the uh, of the screen so you can obviously see that 
And here's some more. You got your cooking fire, which is a crafting skill. Um, you got your uh, tailor, and these are basically like your general goods people who sell um, different stuff. So like your weaponsmith is going to sell some weapons. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously your leather worker is going to sell... Um, Obviously, a little bit of armor. Ar armor is going to sell like your heavy armor. Um, woodworker is going to sell like your staffs and bow, your shields, stuff like that. Now, here we go to over here to our tradesman square. And you have blacksmithing station, clothing station, enchanting table. Um, basically, those are more of your uh, crafting ability skills. That left you that let you craft different things. So obviously blacksmithing is going to be heavy armor. It's going to be swords. It's going to be uh, basically your two-hander uh, metal equipment. Clothing, you're going to do light armor and medium armor there. So light armor for magic characters, medium armor for stamina characters. Oh, and then obviously blacksmithing for tanky, um, more tanky players like tanks. Enchanting table lets you um, let you buy, or excuse me, lets you craft. Uh, so enchanting tables let you craft enchants, which basically what they are are little sigils or little armor pieces that you can attach to your armor or jewelry or your weapon to help you uh, in your stats so for instance on armor pieces what it will do is you can either choose one of the one of the four uh, enchants you can either choose just straight a health cliff which is gonna uh, once you attach it to your armor it's gonna increase your health if you do stamina obviously it's gonna increase your stamina and magic is gonna increase your magicka and the fourth one is gonna be a tri stack glyph which head has all three together so you're going to have health magic and stam on one glyph and you can put that in the armor and increase those three stats now for jewelry it's pretty lengthy on what you can do but i'll give you some uh some things you can do you can either add um magic recovery glyphs stamina recovery glyphs health recovery glyphs either weapon or spell damage glyphs and there's obviously, and there's a, a ton, ton of glyphs that you can add to your jewelry. Now, and, and it goes for the same as weapons. And when you add a glyph to your weapon, you're going to have, you can have like weapon damage glyphs. Uh, it'll be weapon and spell damage glyphs. You can have poison, um, fire, shock, frost. Uh, there's, there's numerous amounts of enchants for that as well. So that's what the enchanting table lets you do, lets you be able to craft that stuff. Pack merchant, basically somebody you can just sell shit to. Alright, so now we're looking at the Undaunted Enclave, or Enclave, whatever you want to call it. What this icon is, is once you hit level 45, you're going to get a message in the mail, and it's going to be a little letter saying, Hey, Undaunted, you finally hit level 45, about time. Come see me at the Undaunted Enclave, and you'll have to go to your starting area. Again, if you're in D.C., you will, you will go to Stormhaven. Obviously, you're going to Wayrest when you get the chance, and you'll go here. Now, if you're in A.D., I'll show you where that's at. AD, you'll be in Grotwood with the big tree, the Elden Root tree, and it'll be right here. Uh, if you're in EP area, you'll go to the Sean Mornhold, and it's all the way at the uh, left side of the, uh, I guess you could say, Great Wall of the Sean. Anyways, you'll go over here, and uh, that's if you're on EP. Now, once you, oops, clicked out of that. Now, once you pick up that and you hit level 45, you can start doing um, the dailies and or the daily pledges or whatever people like to call them. 
a lot of people either call them just that, hey, does anybody want to do the dailies? Or, hey, does anybody want to do the daily pledges? Or, does somebody want to do the pledges? That's what they're talking about. Once you get level 45, what's going to happen is you can come over here. There will be three quests that you can pick up daily. Um, I believe they restart at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, you'll be able to pick them up, um, you know, every day. So you go here, you pick them up, and what you're going to do is you can view what they say on your quest journal. What they'll say every time, they will say pledge, and then it'll say colon, um, spindle clutch one, or ray rest one, or whatever it's going to say. It'll say pledge, and that means it's one of your daily pledges that you can do. And basically what you can do after you pick that up you go to activity finder you go to dungeon finder and then you, it'll say it'll say random dungeon or specific dungeon and then you click specific one you can click whichever one you want um, and then you can go to random and then choose a random dungeon uh, make sure that you do your random dungeons daily as well on normal that way you can just blow them out the water and be done with them and not have to spend hours upon hours on a vat dungeon that could, you know, potentially take that long. Now this activity finder is actually a pretty new feature that had came out, I believe, around ICP patch. I don't remember exactly when it came out, but it came out around that time. And it's a really cool feature. It does take a little bit of time if you are a DPS. If you're queuing as a DPS, it will take a little bit of time to queue up and, and get into a group, into a dungeon finder. But if you're a tank or a healer, um, you do uh, have a little bit slight advantage because nobody likes to be a support. Everybody likes to do damage. You can also um, queue up for Battlegrounds, which is going to be in a base game soon. Which is a really fun add-on that they uh, added in uh, one of their DLCs, which basically is a four-on-four-on-four on four on four grouping um, or PvP type area. It's a small-scale battle, and it's it's a really really fun to do. I just recently started doing it, and they have different game styles like Chaos Ball, Capture the Flag, um, or Capture the Relic, or whatever they call it, Domination or team deathmatch and as you can say if you've ever played call of duty and uh, those are the types of stuff that they have it's really cool once you're at level 10 in between champion point well in between skills champion points and journal there'll be a thing that says campaign you'll click on that and uh obviously you'll get to go into pvp once you hit level 10. now here's how you add people just in case you don't know um, you, what you're going to do is you're going to hit that start button and it'll go social, then it'll go friends and then you're going to click add friend, hit A and then you can type at boo boo, boo boo, boo boo or whatever. You hit enter and then you go down to request and then it'll send the invite to that person. You can put people on the ignore list. How do you do that? You're going to hit X, type it in at so and so whatever here's the different guilds that we're gonna have um, you can join a total of five different guilds um, basically what they do is they'll have like a brief description like a message of the day hey this is what we this is what we're about or this is some information you need to know about blah 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 here's the about us hey this is what's up whatever um, this is what we're about whatnot so and then you can go here and go to roster and check how many people's on the roster, whatever, travel to somebody's house, stuff like that. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show you guys is going to be about the crafting stuff. So all this crafting stuff that's going on, it's a little bit overwhelming as far as, you know, you can craft this, you can craft that, and you can make this and that, and blah, 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 blah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little bit of something about it. That way you're not over, you're not too overwhelmed by it. So right here, where the uh, the wood cutting and alchemist uh, table. So you're gonna go in here. Here's the alchemy station. Basically, what this does is it's going to 
Um, if you use the Poson um, area, you're going to be able to combine different things that increase that's going to give you so much health immediately or so much stamina immediately or so much magic immediately and you can you can make some potions um that are going to increase all three immediately there's like immune pots there's invisible pots and stuff like that so um definitely look into um getting your alchemy up and, and really messing with it where it says require solvent proficiency 8. That just means the level. So the higher level you are at uh, alchemy. The, um, and you put the respected skills in those slots. You'll be able to uh, make. You know the higher level you are. The higher potions you'll be able to make. And the longer you'll be able to make those potions. Now your poisons. These are kind of a pain in the ass. And I kind of wish they would have took them out the game. But. For PvP, they're extremely annoying. You can equip these to your weapon, and what they do is any and you have like a 20% chance um, to light or heavy attack on somebody, and it's gonna you can either increase their ultimate cost, you can increase their magicka or stamina cost, you can do poison damage to them, and and you know basically take health from them and give it to you I mean there's there's so many options you can do with poisons tons of tons of tons of options all right so now we're looking at woodworking station basically this is going you're gonna craft bows any kind of staff and then shields so keep this in mind and this and I'm not really gonna go too much into um, blacksmithing and clothing but basically what you want to do you want to go to research and as you can see I already have some that I can research what you're gonna do is the ones that you want to research first and I'm telling you straight up the ones that you want to research first for weapons and this goes for all weapons all right staffs two-handers one one hand weapons two-handed weapons the weapons that you want to um, not so much in this order, but the ones that you want to research first that you can start making later on or transmute later, which I'll get into transmute after this, is precise, infused, sharpen, and nern home. Those are the ones you want to keep a lookout for and, and try and research those as quick as possible. Nern Home is going to be a little bit harder if you're just starting out in the game because these are only acquired in certain in a certain area of the game and I'm doing certain things. So it will be a little bit harder for you to get those. Once you get enough money, you can look in the guild traders for Nern Home, <clears throat> Nern Home weapon, a specific weapon Nern Home if you want to research it. Um, and a lot of people sell them for, a, you know, like 1k... Well, you know, a few K or a few hundred gold, whatnot. And it goes the same thing with shield. You can go through here and you can, uh, you, what you would do is you would click on this little um, impenetrable, which is going to, oh, and also for armor pieces, let me just go right into this. Um, for armor pieces, the ones that you want to learn, sturdy, impenetrable, Divines and Nern Hone. Those are about the four you really want to look for first and then go infused, reinforce, uh, well fitted if I didn't say it. And then make sure that you have training and invigorating on your last, your last ones. Um, basically what training does increases the experience you gain from kills which is nice. And then invigorating is just kind of shitty trade. Basically increases your health, magicka, and stamina recovery. It's not that great. Don't even worry about it. Make this one the absolute last one you can do. So basically what it means is when I go to research this, it's going to take me five hours to research one equipment. 
Once I get to two, it's going to be like eight hours. Then the next one's going to be like ten hours. And the next one's going to be like 13 hours. It just constantly goes up. So if you get the better traits out of the way first, then you'll be able to, you know, um, transmute um, certain um, equipment, certain traits. Or you'll be able to make those traits, uh, make, make those weapons or those armors in those traits. Um, better air quicker excuse me so I'm gonna teleport to my boy inkling's house who has a transmute stone or transmute uh, transmute uh, station and I'll show you what I mean with that all right so we're at the house uh, basically what the transmute station is what I've been going on about if uh, here and there is it's a it's a way that okay let's you remember how we talked about your our our traits right so we have our training traits and then our enchant which is stamina um let's our transmute station what that allows you to do is transmute this training piece into whatever piece i have learned so if i have a divines Peace learns or infuse their sturdy trait learn for medium armor legs. I'm able to transmute those, um, this training into that specific piece. So as we go up here, and here's the transmute station. Basically, you go in here, and let's say I wanted to change this uh, great sword into one of these. I would have to learn the one of these traits as a great sword to be able to transmute it. Now, it does cost 50 transmute gems, as you can see, or crystals, whatever you want to call it, in the bottom left-hand corner. And at the top left, I have 44 out of 200. So, as you can see, the math doesn't add up. So, once I have uh, six more, I can obviously transmute something on a different character that has something learned. Obviously, this guy doesn't have anything learned. So, there's that. So, that's why I say when you're going to research items, make sure that you research the ones... Um, Make sure you research the good ones first and leave the bad ones for later. Again, you're going to want for weapons, you're going to want precise, infused, sharpened, nerd hone. Nerd hone is going to take you a little bit of time. Um, but if you can't get nerd hone, do decisive, then do, um, you know, then do the other ones. Powered, we're not really using that one too much. Charge, we're not using that one. Defending, we're not really using that one. And... And training, the only time we're using training unless we unless we go somewhere to where we want to gain more XP or something like that. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that you want to look for. Again, um, they're going to be precise, infused, sharpen, nerd hone. Definitely try and research those as quick as possible and then start researching the other ones. That's for weapons only. Now for armor pieces, can we swap over? Let's swap over. We're, okay, so basically what you do is you obviously you hit LB or RB to swap over. We're going into armor pieces. And uh, what is this? Medium legs? Yeah, so we're at medium legs. And for armor pieces all together, what you want to research first. Um, you're going to want to research divines first because I'm almost 100% sure anybody who looks at this video will more than likely want to be a DPS at some point in their life. So do divines first. And then if you ever want to be a tank, do sturdy. Do impen if you want to be in PvP sometime. Do reinfer reinforce, well fitted and fuse. Um, basically all these are pretty decent traits. So you, you just want to make sure you have divines first. Sturdy if you want to tank. Impen if you want to do PvP. And then, um, you know, Nern Home as well. So, that's about it as far as I can think of. If um, 
actually here here's another thing uh, we'll go over skills right quick so here's the skills right now when you're first coming up you're only going to be at like level two or whatever what you're going to want to do when you're leveling you want to have at least one skill on your bar per class ability and then um, if you kill something with your two with I say I killed something with my two-hander and I want to start leveling up two-hander once I kill something with that um, it'll pop up and it'll say like two-hander ability uh, you know unlocked or whatever and then you can on un then you can unlock one of their skills from the two-hander ability or dual wield or destruction staff ability or uh, resto staff whatever you can unlock that and put that on your bar as well and then once you start getting higher in, in fighters guild mages guild <clears throat> depending on which skill you want to level up you can put that on your bar as well now if i have a two-hander and a skill ability up on my bar i will level that a lot quicker than i would my class abilities because i have two of them so if let's say you're an Arctic Spear and you want to get to Sun Shield as quick as possible, what you would do is every time you unlock the um, Arctic Spear ability, you would put it on your bar. So let's say that I'm at uh, Spear Shards. I have Spear Shards, Focus, Charge, Piercing, Javelin, and Puncturing Sweeps all on my bar to try and get Sun Shield. Obviously, Arctic Spear will be the only thing I'll be leveling up unless I have Don's Wrath or Restoring Light ability on my bar as well. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit confusing, but hopefully you guys understand. If you don't, obviously, um, just leave a comment down below and I will try and better explain that. Again, I hope that guys, uh, guys, I hope this helped. Um, I will be doing another video today. Um, it should be dropping today on which uh, which app I use to get these add-ons and whatnot. And I'll kind of go over go over it. But uh, if you do watch this before that video, uh, the app or whatever you want to call it to download onto your computer is going to be called the Minion. And uh, on the next video, I'll have the description below and all that stuff. But you can start looking for it on Google and whatnot if you want to. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.